Let's take a minute to talk about maintaining these seacocks or these valves. One thing is, again, we want to make sure that we exercise this handle at least once a year. We're going to open this up and down a couple of times to make sure it's smooth and easy. Uh, the reason why we exercise this is to move the mechanism inside there. If the seacock sits in the same position, whether it's open or closed, over time it may corrode and seize in that one spot. And you may not be able to open it or close it if you have to uh, have an emergency. Another thing we're looking at is underneath of this seacock is a strainer. Uh, that strainer is there to stop debris from coming in up through that seacock. And inside here, barnacles can grow. So if the boat doesn't move for a long time, we may get growth or barnacles actually inside the seacock. So when the boat's out of the water, we want to look up there and definitely make sure this valve is clear. We could take the hose off and, and look in there too if we need to. And that strainer is also something that needs to be serviced. Some of these strainers underneath the hull are going to have anodes attached to them that will need servicing, protect it from uh, underwater corrosion. And also these strainers a lot of times are painted. Over time, people paint and they actually paint the holes up or close in the strainer. So you got to make sure that there's good water flow coming through there. And sometimes you may have to remove on these serviceable strainers, you might have to take the grate down and get inside there and clean or even paint. So just make sure that you're maintaining that strainer um, so that you have good water flow. Next, let's talk about some common installation practices with through hulls and seacocks. So I'm first going to grab this through hull. Uh, this is a through hull with a barb fitting on, so something that you're going to see uh, mainly, hopefully, above the water line. So this would be good for a through hull that's exiting above the static water line. Make sure you're aware of ABYC standards for placement of this. Uh, we would see this going through the hull, and it just comes through, and we'd have some sealant on the outside, and on the inside, we would have this nut that we'd be putting on and tightening up. Uh, just make sure when you're installing this type of through hull that you're aware of hull thickness. Uh, some smaller boats can have some really thin hulls. You want to make sure that this thing's going to be able to get tight and secure. Um, if it's a thicker hull, uh, you want to make sure that you have enough strength here. You might need a backing plate. Uh, maybe have an imperfect hull and you might have to form something to fit there. We want this nut uh, to basically go flat against whatever you're sealing against. So I'm going to put this in here and we want to get that snugged up and a tool of choice is going to be this all right, step tool which has different um, steps on here for different size through hulls. Inside the through hull you'll see there are things called dogs, those little parts in there. And the whole idea of this tool is that you can put it in there and grab that and that's going to give you a way to grab it and tighten it up. And on the end you can put an adjustable or a pipe wrench on here to get this thing snugged up. So. You know, we're going to put a turn on there, we're going to see our sealant come out. And just keep in mind, above the static water line, this is an okay um, installation. We're going to have our hose come on there, All right, at least have one uh, quality marine clamp. But this is above water line only. Once we start going down below the water line, uh, this would not be a great application. And one is you would have this hose coming off uh, this fitting underwater. So if anything should happen with this hose or any of the system down below, you have no way of shutting the water off. So that becomes a problem. The second thing is this part is sticking out so long, we've got to make sure is will this setup be able to handle the 500 um, static load test. Basically we want to make sure that if we step on this or something hits it, it doesn't shear it off. And what you're going to find out is there's a good chance this is not going to pass that. So uh, this is not something we want to mount underwater. Underwater, we're definitely going to want to have some type of seacock uh, installation. And what I'm showing you here is a flange seacock. But before we get to that flange seacock, let's show you another common practice that you may see.